Deep in the Amazonian rainforest of French Guiana, Europe's most sophisticated space technology is ready for blast off. Today, space travel is no longer the realm of fairy tales. In the European Space Center, it's big business. Rocket launchings take place almost every 28 days. Here, a Mexican satellite was being launched. It was very difficult to bring our fifth satellite into orbit because it's a very heavy and technologically advanced satellite. But Ariane Space proved once again that they're capable of providing strong results when called upon to solve big problems. Every step of this massive operation is carried out according to plan. This latest Ariane rocket is transported in pieces from Europe to the harbour of Kourou in French Guiana, just one month before the launch. The trip from Europe to South America takes 12 days. After being manufactured for months in Europe, the Ariane will be reassembled in the space center and used to launch many satellites. Rockets were first launched here in 1968. In 1980, the first commercial space transportation company was formed. The convoy makes it impossible for other traffic to pass and takes several hours from the harbor to the space center. The Space Transport Agency which made this rocket, Ariane Space, is comprised of several European companies. Years of experience have made Ariane Space a major player in the space transport industry. More than half of all commercial satellites are shot into orbit from Europe's spaceport in Kourou, making Ariane the most successful commercial rocket around. The Ariane Space director explains the company's track record. I would say that uh, to, when, when you have to choose a launch vehicle, uh, you take care of several things. It's not only the price. Uh, I would say the main quality of, of a launch system is to offer a launch service. And what we offer since many years, it's a full launch service. For sure, uh, something you have to pay for a service. Uh, Sometimes uh, a good quality uh, mean, needs uh, some, uh, uh, some investment. But when you, you uh, get a very precise, a very accurate orbit, because the advantage of Kourou is high. We, we can talk uh, later about that. But uh, to be on the equator offers a lot of advantages, offer a longer lifetime for the spacecraft into orbit. So when you add all things, it's very important. The space center in Guyana occupies the surface area of a small town. Every morning, around 500 people go to work here. And if there's a rocket launching, it's five times as many. Assembling the rocket requires a lot of skilled technicians. Each step is monitored. The whole process must function like clockwork. Every screw turned is inspected in order to avoid mistakes. But for the on-site engineers, a rocket launching is nothing extraordinary. It's part of daily life, part of big business, which has been going on here for 30 years. French Guiana nestles on the border with Brazil, and the rainforest tries to claw back the grounds of the space center. It used to be a French colony. In the 1940s, its status changed to that of an overseas department. This makes French Guiana the same as a normal French province, just like Provence or Alsace. It's now the last bastion of Europe in South America. Sparsely populated, a mere 140,000 people inhabit an area as big as Belgium. There's only traffic on the streets of the capital, Cayenne, at lunchtime, but many feel the space traffic is swamping this sleepy world. The Ariane is the only channel of investment here. On a launch day, there are several million dollars at stake. Such a vast amount of money needs to be closely watched, so the French government has sent the 3rd Infantry Corps of the French Foreign Legion to protect the space program. The whole year round, Legionnaires guard the Ariane. Giovanni Evangelista and his fellows are parachutists by trade. They're in the process of touring the Legion outposts around the world. 
The only thing that people know about Legionnaires is their nationality. Men from any country can join the French Foreign Legion, but true to its roots, the organization still offers the chance of a new life. Many change their name and identity the day they enter. But ask any Legionnaire why he's here, and you'll be greeted with an enigmatic response. Why did I join the Legion? Because I had some problems I can't talk about now. I joined in 1987, a day in December. French Guyana always used to be a place for no good men, once notorious as a brutal penal colony. Over a long period of time, France sent thieves, killers and political prisoners here, all given the sentence of banishment, la bagne, the most feared destiny a court could impose. Hundreds of prisoners were sent on ships over the Atlantic Ocean onto the three islands off Guyana's coast. Nowadays, only ruins testify to that brutal history, although some convict settlements lasted until the Second World War. How does a place like this throw off the yoke of such suffering and cruelty, where prisoners performed exhausted labor under the burning sun? Everything here was built by the prisoners, from the prison buildings to the house of the commander. Some came to Guyana just to die. In dark cells, they would await their appointment with the guillotine. The artist Francois Lagrange painted the everyday life of the prisoners. He was sent to Guyana for counterfeiting money and saved himself from hard labor by painting the prison life. Other famous names sent here include the Jew, Alfred Dreyfus. One thing was clear, there was no way back to France. After the prisoners served their punishment here, they had to stay in Guyana for the rest of their lives. This rule lasted until 1953, when the prison was officially closed. The conditions here were so hard because of the hot and humid climate, which lots of them couldn't resist. It was very hard for Dreyfus, for example. He was alone on an island with no one to speak to. Not even the guards spoke to him. The other prisoners didn't have an easy life either. They had to build roads, a really hard job, and the regime was really hard. When the convicts arrived here, they weren't sent straight to the islands, but to the camp of Saint Laurent. Once they reached these shores, they considered themselves forgotten by France and the rest of the world. Their only belongings were a pair of trousers, the shirt on their back, a plate, and a cup. From here, the prisoners were put to work in the jungle, felling trees and pulling tree trucks. Half of the newly arrived prisoners died after the first year. Tropical diseases and unsanitary food was devastating to their health. And there was no escape. The guard system was perfectly organized and those who risked escape were either found dead several days later or recaptured by guards and thrown into dark and humid cells. At night, the prisoners were put into iron chains. There were no mattresses. They had to sleep on the cement floor. That was unbearable. Today, it's forbidden to visit the notorious former penal colony on Devil's Island. As with the other islands, it's private property. Its owner, the space center of French Guyana. At 
At the Space Center, everything is being prepared for the next Ariane launch. Radars from the Space Center's own weather center make a precise forecast of changing weather patterns. A storm or heavy rain could be dangerous. Nothing is left to chance. If the weather conditions aren't right, the launch will be called off. The Ariane team doesn't want to be caught off guard by a climatic inconvenience, even though they passed the 100 launch barrier in 1997. The biggest danger is that the rocket be launched during a lightning or a thunderstorm. Another danger is strong wind. We can't launch if there's strong wind at high altitudes because the rocket might slide off course. These are the two main problems. Nearby is the weather station of the technical school for the French overseas department in the region. After receiving a degree here, a student can go to France and start a university career or look for a job as a technician. Cedric Ferreira on the right came to Guyana from the south of France two and a half years ago in order to continue his studies here. He wanted a change in climate and was keen to see the Ariane up close. But on arrival, his enthusiasm waned as he discovered that Ariane space only employs Frenchmen not local residents from Kourou. I came here from France because I've always been fascinated by rockets and space. That's why I wanted to be close to the rocket. Now I can see it from the window of my classroom. It's always been my dream to work here. That's why I came. But now my dream seems just that. In comparison to neighboring countries, French Guiana has a very good education system. The schools are equipped like in France, and the degrees are the same. But the chances of finding a job here are much slimmer. The satellites launched by Ariane are used to transmit phone calls and soccer games between continents, or monitor the Earth. Clients come from all over the world. Commercial demand for rockets like Ariane is very high, and there's a long waiting list for clients who want to launch satellites. Ariane's main competitors come from the US, Russia, and now even China has its own rocket. In order to stay ahead of the fierce competition, new technologies are constantly developed. Ariane Space has ambitious plans. With its new generation of rockets, the Ariane 5, the company soon hopes to be able to simultaneously transport several satellites into orbit at once. They also hope to expand the amount of weight that each rocket can support. Currently, an Ariane rocket's maximum capacity is five tons, but within a few years, this number should double. For clients, the additional capacity will surely hike the present $70 million price tag per launching even higher. But the career of this rocket has not been trouble-free. The June 96 launching of a new Ariane 5 was supposed to herald a new era in the European space program. Instead, that launch ended in failure. Just seconds after takeoff, the rocket went off course and had to be blown up in order to avoid a crash. Fabrice Daltroff is in charge of flight safety. He pilots the Ariane, although he's always firmly located on Earth. On his monitors, he receives all of the Ariane's flight data. And with this data, it's up to him to decide if the Ariane has to be blown up or not. If the rocket threatens to crash, it's his job to press the button. My wife says that on a launch day, I'm not the same person. I think she's right because there's a lot of pressure on me. 
But I don't worry if the rocket's worth one million or one billion francs. I worry more about not blowing up a rocket that threatens to go down on an area where people live. The fear is always there, even if you have lots of experience. French Guiana's tropical rainforest is as diverse as anywhere in South America. But environmentalists fear this could change. At each rocket launching, tons of aluminium and carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Lab tests on rats have shown that the lungs of the animals exposed to these elements were damaged. And the effect of acid rain caused by the launchings has yet to be investigated. But Ariane space is unruffled. There is a, a very uh, precise uh, environment and safety regulation. Uh, in order to preserve the people and the assets. And uh, we have a great safety organization on the ranch. Uh, we uh, can't do anything without taking appropriate measures. We have also, uh, for a launch, uh, a lot of measurements around to see if there is an impact on the life, on the vegetation, and, and on everything. Well, the other uh, big uh, characteristic was to not to suffer a big problem of environment. Not too many people around. The environmental group Pou d'Agouti is more sceptical, pointing out that Ariane space would not carry out thorough investigations of the rocket's environmental impact. Every couple of weeks, satellites are launched here for the purpose of communication as well as surveillance of the Earth to observe the forest and the desert. It's cutting edge technology. But the problem in Guyana is that nobody puts this technology to use to measure the environmental damage it causes. But environmental worries are not the primary concern for people living in Guyana. They suffer from a lack of industry and a scarcity of jobs. Most live on unemployment benefit. Industry needs massive investment. Just a small portion of the rainforest here is exported for economic ends. None of these trunks will be exported to Europe. Yet logging is not a particularly viable alternative, since the world's rainforest is being devastated at an alarming rate. But the locals here feel excluded from the benefits of modern development, which the rocket has brought at the expense of their habitat. The descendants of black slaves have fared especially badly. Pierre Namont is the chief of the Bonny village in Saint Laurent. The Bonny came to French Guiana in the 17th century when they ran away from their slave owners. Today, they're trying to maintain their agriculture-based village life. But since a fire in their village a few weeks ago, these Bonny are living in this community house where they gather to discuss problems or celebrate weddings. Until their homes are rebuilt, they'll be allowed to stay here. Our biggest problem is that we can't find work to earn money. There are very few employment opportunities here. It's not as easy for us to get hired as it is for a white man like you or a European. This is why life is so difficult for us. The Bonnie benefit little from the space center in Kuru. Not a single Bonnie works there. As is so often the case with big business in the third world, the jobs go to highly paid European specialists. There are few examples of industrial production in French Guiana outside of the rocket industry. The state government in Paris has done almost nothing to promote industry here. The fishing cooperative in KN is one of the few well-managed businesses. Fish from the Caribbean are cut into fillets in the company's cold storage. Then, they're put into plastic bags, ready for export. But fish caught and packaged here are expensive compared to fish originating in Asia. As a result, exportation is limited. Arno Monet is head of the fish firm and keen to play up the other sectors of the economy, aside from Ariane. If we're talking about industry in French Guiana, Ariane comes first. 
and the rest come way down the scale. The rest means fishing, agriculture, the wood industry. It's difficult to say which of these three is the most important component of the economy. But it's true to say that we export a lot of prawns and fish to Europe, to France, Spain and Italy. There's little activity in Cayenne Harbour. French Guyana survives on the subsidies it receives from Paris. Ships arrive with containers full of material goods and usually sail back empty. But not everybody likes to be fed by the government in Paris. Lots of people consider such dependency a relic of the country's colonial past. The Independence Party won 10% of the votes in the last elections. It says Guyana should see more direct returns from the space industry. There's one thing working in French Guyana, and that's the space center. The space center is developing itself extraordinarily well, but that's it. But Guyana is not profiting from the rocket launchings like France and Europe. There are no locals working at the space center who are profiting from it. Only a small number of companies that supply parts for the Ariane opened up factories in Guyana. Euro Propulsion is one of them, producing engines for the Ariane. There are several reasons why we came here. One of them is that the transport costs are high and very complicated. Then, there was the political will of the company to create an industrial infrastructure in Guyana because the region needs it. In the assembly workshops of the Italian-owned company, the boosters, part of the Ariane's engines, are being produced. Once finished, these boosters will be more than 30 meters high. The fuel used is a highly explosive gas mixture. Once the Ariane is launched, these engines propel the rocket into space, and after two minutes, they are burned up in space or dropped into the ocean, another pollutant for the environment. Before each rocket launching, the French Foreign Legion leaves its fort to hinder possible saboteurs. Whilst the rocket has never been sabotaged, the Legionnaires say their presence has been the principal deterrent to terrorists. Usually, there are no serious shootouts in French Guiana. In the middle of the Guianese jungle, the Legion runs a combat training camp. It's not only members of the French Foreign Legion here. Soldiers from other armed forces train here too. The camp is said to be the toughest of its kind anywhere in the world. From here, the Legion is deployed to conflict areas across the globe. The French Foreign Legion is almost a legend, best pictured holed up in a remote desert fort, fending off territorial attack. It was founded to fight for the interests of France, and here in the 1990s, Legionnaires are still doing just that. In French Guyana, French interests clearly lie in the Ariane. They see their mission as crucial. The space center has to be protected from all possible terrorist attacks. Although the surrounding area is full of swamp, we have to search it to prevent all possible threats. From the space center, the presence of the Legion is hardly noticeable, as they try to keep a low profile. But most of the parts which make up the Ariane are not produced in French Guiana. In the assembly halls of Daimler Chrysler Aerospace in the German city of Bremen, the workers are putting the final touches to the rocket parts before their journey across the Atlantic. An error at this stage could cost millions of dollars. That's why DASA assembles the parts in Germany. Guyana only serves as an ideal launch base for the space industry. Before each launch, several tests are conducted in order to avoid errors. 20 minutes after launch, the rocket is automatically fueled by solar energy panels. The satellite is moved delicately 
because of its high explosivity. At this stage, there's just one week before launch, and the countdown is already in motion. From this point on, everything must work perfectly. If the engineers are in a hurry, the satellite is flown in by a Russian transport plane, a quicker but costlier alternative to a slow-moving ocean liner. With the proliferation of satellite communications and TV stations, the demand for satellite launches like the Ariane will only increase. But it remains to be seen whether a greater share of that profit will trickle down to French Guiana. After launching, the Ariane has a short life. The rocket parts burn up in space. At the end, just the capsule covering the satellite remains. Once in orbit, the satellite is released. The critical moment is the opening of the panels. When that happens, ground control knows everything has gone smoothly. It's an indescribably happy moment when everything has worked well. Preparations for the launching have taken five to six weeks. And within 20 minutes, we have the results. Either there was no mistake and everything functioned as planned, or something went wrong. Before that, there was lots of work done in Europe. The rocket has been assembled for over five to six months and it's impossible to describe the happy feeling when everything turns out well. With the launching of Ariane 5, European space technology enters the new millennium. Within a couple of years, there could be several launches a month. That is, if the ecological time bomb the rocket is creating does not go off.